What up, what up, it's your boy Paul P. I serve God, I'm not God, this is just my opinion, and welcome to an episode on the Nothing to Some podcast. Man, we have a special guest, we got special guests in the building today. Today we got, all the way from Inglewood, California, Munchie B in the building. Yo, yo. Amazing, beautiful co-host, Mariah, how y'all doing? Oh, straight, bro. Thanks for having me, man. Man, man. It's, it's, it's great to be sitting at this table, man, you know, with y'all. You know, I'll I be looking at, you know, y'all podcasts and see what y'all got going on and everything like that. You know, uh, you know, before, as we get into it and everything, you know, I want y'all to let the people know a little bit about what y'all y'all got, got, got going on. Because like I said, I I love what y'all doing. So if y'all don't mind, let's talk about it a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, earlier this year, we we, we uh, started Rich Your Heart podcast over there on the Street, Street TV YouTube channel. Uh, I linked up with Mariah. Then uh, we got our chemistry together. Got on camera. Got it going. Uh, Alex, Alex put us together. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, before that, they were dabbing with the rap. You know I mean, long live my boy Slim Fo Honey. Was ice water. You know, ice water doing the, the little. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, other than that, just daddy duties and day to day, regular regular shit. That's what's up. That's what's up. You know, um, and, and Mariah, you know, I know you, you, you the co-host. Yes. So you know, let us know a little bit about yourself as well. Um, so I'm an author. That's how I got um, introduced with Alex Alonzo a couple of years back, and um, just doing you know writing and um, uh, I, I did an interview with, about my son, and nice. it did pretty well, went viral, and he linked me and Munchie up, and it went from there, and we have great chemistry and great ideas, and that's how you know we got rich at heart. That's what's up. That's dope. That's dope. One thing I do know is that you know chemistry means a lot yes you know especially in this industry you know uh i i, I know that because i have a co-host on one of our other shows the uh, cancel culture show and um amarachi me and her we connect you know and we click you know just like that and i could tell y'all got that same vibe going on that means a lot it's hard to people think it's just easy coming sitting at sitting at the table and doing your thing yeah we balance each other you know? out because i got the uh the street element of things you know what i'm saying yeah mm-hmm. and then you know what i'm saying she be you know you got the angel on one shoulder and the <laughs> so when I get too far out, she can pull me back like, much. you know, I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. It's cool. Yeah, that's dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. So we're going to get into that a little bit more, you know, you know, as well, you know, because I want to hear a little bit about y'all, more about y'all podcast and what y'all got coming and everything like that. You know, um, but first, let's, I want to get into, you know, this is your first time here, Munchie, you know, mm-hmm. and I want to get into a little bit of your, um, you know, your beginning, because here at the Nothing to Some Podcast, we like to get your story. You know, because, um, you know, it's a lot of lessons that people could learn from an individual story, mm-hmm. background, and a history. You know, so with that being said, I want to go back. You know, um, you come from um, Inglewood. Well, we know you come from Inglewood, California. You know, what was it like, you know, growing up and coming up in Inglewood? Uh, Inglewood, Inglewood was fun, cool. Uh, you know, like it's a predominantly blood city, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's who all my peers was. So before I was even official with anything, I thought I was that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just playing sports coming up, I was really in tune with the sports, and then other things got my attention other than sports. Uh, and then I had an older brother that did music, and that was more so like the person I looked up to. And then, like I said, things got my attention. I'm start following the other brother and mimicking what my dad doing, and just being impressionable and stuff. So. Stuff like that. Then uh, early on, like my mom, her, her house had foreclosed, and we had moved to moved to Compton, uh-huh. and that's when I met my boy Slam and started messing with him real heavy. But always went back to Inglewood, never stopped going. You know Man. what I'm saying? Yeah, dope, dope. You you from Inglewood too, Mariah? No, I'm from LA County though. Okay, yeah. LA. Got you, got <laughs> you. You know, uh, true story. So, um, I, I was I grew up in Watts, right? Yeah, but, I heard you um, say you went to school in Inglewood. Yeah, my mom, she worked at, she got a job at Northrop. You know the little like plane place on right Imperial. on the side of on Imperial, off, off the side of one hundred and five. 
Yeah, so she was working there, so she put me in school in Inglewood. You know, she felt, okay, it's a little bit better over there, which wasn't no different. <laughs> no different at all, you know. But I went to Bennett Q, and then I went to uh, Monroe and then Morningside for a year before I went to uh, Moreno Valley, the IE. You, you know, went to all three, all three levels in Inglewood. Yep, yep. Bennett Q, you know, Monroe, and then Morningside for a year before I, before I bounced out, you know, so. So yeah, I never forget, man. Like I always tell this story, you know, we, you know, at Ben and Q in Monroe, you had a red P uniforms. So before we used to go back home, mommy say, okay, take those uniform off, take it off, son. You know, because we going back to Watts, where's <laughs> Grave Street, all around our, you know, neighborhood we in and everything. So, you know, uh, those, those are when, you know, those are the days. Whenever I think about that, I'm like, damn, you know, I, you didn't really think about it at that time. Why, you know, mom's was having you, you know, change the fit and everything. But you know, it's crazy because Monroe and Warner saw they. School colors is red and the PE uniforms, everything. So yes. when I come to school wearing all this red, they, they I'm like, it's the school colors. You know what exactly. I'm saying? But they trip it all. That shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you go to uh, what? Where you went to out there? You went to Benicu? I went. I went to uh, Warren Lane, Monroe, Morningside. That's where my bro went. Warren Hill Lane. Chris. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Also, too, I heard you talk about Darby Park. Oh yeah. So you grew up around there, at Darby Park? Yeah, I grew up in that park. Okay. P- played basketball coming up. I was in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now we, we I play got, ball over there too. Yep. Are you go up there balling? We was balling over. We was there, we was there for the summers. You know, okay, my mom okay. would put us in a little summer program at Darby Park. You know, over the Your summers. Your mama love Inglewood. Man, she was working over there, and she was like, she she ended up moving over there after I moved to the IE. She moved over there with my little brother and sister. So, so she didn't my want brother you and sister went to Warren Lane. Nah. She was like, nah, I'm getting up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So she she felt a little bit more comfortable in Inglewood, even though it wasn't. Look, it, it's, it, to me, it was it was it was the same. I didn't really see it no different. I had homies in, you know, Watts. I had homies in Inglewood. You know, uh, you know, a lot of my homies when I went to Bennett Q in my row, they found me was from Inglewood family. You know, so I'm ditching with it, with them, kicking it with them, and all type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really see anything any different, but it made my mom feel comfortable. The look, you know, the look exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, I people if you've been to Watts, you know, Watts is. Uh, it's a lot going on over there. The look, mm-hmm. look wise, you know, people to me no different, but the look wise, it is a little different. You know. So what did I'm you have a good experience uh, playing basketball at Darby? And uh, I I I love playing basketball over there. Now, <laughs> I got a, I got some stories, you know, what I'm saying and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my cousins would come and visit, you know, from the IE when I'm in when I was in like sixth, seventh grade, and I'll never forget, you know, we you know we won a couple of games on the court. And then you know one of the one of the you know dudes up there took the took the ball and he was like you can't get the ball from me homie get off the court <laughs> <laughs> and it's just uh, me my cousin and one of my other cousin this is is about fifteen of them and my cousin he from the he don't really know no better so when you know you know older older cats and everything like that when he said it I just grabbed I said hey we got the next game we good you know what I'm saying <laughs> like, we ain't, I ain't playing no games because I'm I'm from I understand what's going on around here my cousin didn't really understand it. You know what I'm saying? Later, he ended up understanding it, but I'm like, nah, we good. You know, we'll get the next game. Do your thing. You know, <laughs> smart. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, you know, I'll just say this and we'll move move on. You know, I always kind of had a different understanding. My uncles, you know, they they did their thing in the streets. They, you know, uh, you know, you know, was my uncles from Compton, you know, did their thing and everything like that. And they always kept me out of the streets. They always like, you're going to play ball. I played basketball, you know, coming up and everything like that. You know, so I hooped. You know, so they like, nah, you gonna hoop, you keep that ball in your hand. So they kind of shielded me. My my grandparents had 18 kids, you know, 10 boys. And wow. they, they shielded me away from a lot of stuff. So, you know, I kind of tried my best. To, even though I ended up in some things, I tried my best to stay away from it, you know, and if it wasn't for them, who knows where it would have went, you know, so. No, that's good. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So, uh, you know, growing up, did you have um, both parents in the household and everything? Yeah, I had my mom and my dad. Okay, okay. My mom and my dad. I ain't got the uh, what you call like the hard knock story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My my, my dad he 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 uh he he uh, well, like first generation blood or whatever, but he kept a a book in my hand, me in sports. You know what I'm saying? Nice, nice. Like both parents, you know. But you know, people like I don't have my dad, so I you know what I'm saying. I I ain't had that type of little scenario. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So you hooped who then? You was hooping at Derby Park too then? Yeah, I played basketball, but I was better in football. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I played at Derby. Okay, okay. So you was playing in the leagues and everything yeah, like that? Yeah. All right, so you know, like Byron Scott. You know, you see the little thing of it, you know, all of that. Byron Scott, up. Lisa Leslie, yep. Eric Campbell. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's my book? Paul Pierce. Yep. And yep. you know, got it. Yep. Yeah. Eldon Campbell went to um, Monroe. Um, Lisa Leslie went to Morningside, you yep. know. I think all three of them went to uh, Morningside. 
Yep, yep. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. Wow, that's 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 history right and there. You, you only know that if you was over there. Hell yeah. I'm an Inglewood historian, so I know everything over there. That's what's <laughs> up. That's dope. That's dope. So you know around like 13 year old, 13 years old is usually when you get into like, you know, you said sports, you know, and everything like that. You know, sometimes if that, that group is around you, gangs or whatever, around your teenage years, was you still really heavily at sports or is that when you kind of like started getting more into the streets? It was over. I started going to jail every summer. Mm. So you know, if you playing football, trying to play high school football, you got summer league and all that. You know what I'm saying, I mean, passing league, you you, you got a condition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, yeah, the, the the street stuff, it just took over all that. I, I was I was I went to jail every summer. It seemed like wow, wow. So you was really out there then. You know, you know, the the parents wasn't able to kind of like you know shield from that situation. You was like, hey, I'm gonna do me. They try. Yeah. They try. You know. Yeah, they try, but you know, it's on. At some point, you know what I'm saying, the leash go break. Yeah, yeah. That's a, fact. that's a fact. That's a fact. So how did you kind of like get to the point to where it's like, okay, I'm getting put on. You know, I'm gonna be from the hood, everything like that. Like where where did that begin for you, and how did how did that kind of like you know get started for you and everything like that? Really, in Inglewood, I'm from the other like like the uh, on Monroe morning side type of, type side of Century. Okay. I'm from Inglewood family, which is like on the opposite side of Century, but I used to always go to my auntie house. That live on A5 in the hood and shit. Me and my relatives, we all meet up over there on the weekends and ride the bike over there and hang out. Yeah. And then keep in mind with the Warren Lane too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I kind of like uh, 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 blended with, with with the families on that side, like more so than like maybe the Crenshaw Mafia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which yeah. my brother from over there. So I just that was my childhood friends. We just and then I, I was already I got that type of behavior already. You could say you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like they, they, these are my boys, my my childhood. Growing up and all that little shit, and it just, you know, happened. And then I'm kind of like, I ain't like that no more, though. I'm kinda, I was kind of trained not to like Crips. You know what I'm saying? Got you, got like, you. Like, on accident. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I ain't that shit to me, but you know what I'm saying? But that's growth, you know? Like you say, you know, um, you're a product of your environment. We all are, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I said, if it wasn't for my uncles kind of shielding me, you know, saying this is what you're going to do. It's not, all my homies were from, you know, the, you know, all my homies were from, like I say, Grave Street or, you know, when I was in Inglewood, Inglewood family, you know, and many times the homies were like, we put you up, but they, but they have respect for my uncles too. You, you know what I'm saying? You ain't so, got to get put on just to, for them to be your boys though. That's like, they wanted you know to though. The homies always <laughs> wanted They're like, hey, we going to put you on. But a lot of them also knew my family. So they kind of like didn't press it as much, you know what I'm saying? Right, and everything right. like that. But the homies definitely wanted to put me on, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Because I was with them. So you came close. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, hey, you it's your word, you know what I'm saying? When it, you know, when it was my decision many times, and I'm talking about 13, 12, 13, 14, you know? It wasn't all like, you gonna do this. It was more like, hey, what you want to do? We know what's up with your people, but what you want to do? No, you would have been P-Red instead of P-Paw. <laughs> man. Okay, you man. there from the gate. Man, bro, you know what I'm saying? But uh, but that's why I say it's, you, you are, we, are, we are products of our environment. So I understand that. You say, you know, well, this is what I was taught. This is what was going on around me. So this is what it was. But now with where you at now in life, you're like, okay, well, I see things differently. I'm wiser now. You know, I've been through a lot, you know. So that ain't the way I look at the world or view things, you know, anymore. So I would have never thought I'd be able to, like, uh, interview a 60. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I sat down, meet her. We interviewed Ron Ron from 60. You know what I'm saying? That's big. Yeah, that's like, big, man. Yeah, this, this I would have never thought. I give you a clap for that one, man. That's that's big right there. That's dope. That's that dope. was one of our best interviews too. It was really deep and good. Hell yeah! Really good. Wow. Because we didn't go the cloud route. We didn't have to ask him about uh what's going on the internet with six hundred cowboy or brick baby. We just fucked on him. You know what I mean? We ain't got to You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. little the, the the cloud. The, you know the the shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. still come with an interesting interview without. Bringing all that dumb shit up. You know what definitely, I mean? definitely. Yeah, I, you, so you was the one who was asking, you, you, Mariah, you two, you was asking Ron Ron a lot of questions, yes, right? Yes. Okay, I remember some of the clips. I'm yes. thinking back now, like, oh, I remember those clips. Yes. You know, and everything. That's dope. That's dope. I, I, I One thing was, um, I think that was important, was a lot of people that are not um, familiar with, like, you know, cult, the gangbanging culture is they it's just assume, like Munchie had just said, you maybe you're just coming from a one parent household and he definitely explained to us that you know he came from a two parent household yeah. and i think that a lot of people aren't aware of that like you can still come from a good family and still end up in the street yeah, straight yeah. away that's a yeah. fact that's a fact you know cuz like hey my mom was a hard hard worker woman she she my mom, i always say my mom was a square you know she graduated from Crenshaw but like if you 
was smoking in front of my mom, she would run. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So my mom wasn't like into that, but she wasn't going to be the one that protected me from it either. Like I say, I had a lot of strong uncles, you know what I'm saying, that was built differently. It was like, nah, you ain't doing this, or we whooping your ass. Takes a village. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I understand that part right there. You know, when you when you say that, you know, not just your parents could keep you out of that when you come up in, in that environment and everything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so that's dope that you go deep into that, Munchie, you know, and everything yeah, like that, I, you know? I, I, I caught a, I caught, what, my 14 caught an attempt at murder, and my mom was, she knew who I was with, you know what I'm saying? She wanted to go, she was up down the street trying to rip my grandma house, I didn't see it, my dad, like, that's out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he ain't, you know what I'm saying? He got himself in there, he go, he got to figure it, he figure it out, ain't no telling, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, my mom, my mom, she is a, what they call a civilian, like to the core, like she ain't fucking around. Yeah, yeah, man, you know, my mom's is serious, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, you know, our black moms that come from where, you know, they, you know, like I said, my mom was a square, but she didn't play. Like, you can play with her kids. You know, uh, just a quick story real quick. I never forget when I got my, my, my bike ticket when I was in, you know, watch driving up. Uh, what was, where was you up? Over there off of uh, Central, driving, uh, take, uh, rolling my bike up Central, me and two of my cousins. But, you know, I'm young, about 10 years old. You know, a uh, couple of, uh, you know, dudes rode up on me, you know, probably around that time. It was probably 14, 15. Get off your bike, us. Get off your bike. You know, at first I tried to, you know, stay on it, like, you know, <laughs> poke, poke my chest out. They, they throw me off that bike so quick. Took my bike. I went home. My mom said, what? We jumped in that car. She rode around for hours looking for them. Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> she oh, found yeah. where one of them ran up in that house. She went up to that door. Hey, where my son bike at? You know, and yep. everything like that. Mom's wasn't that's playing. Like her. You know, that's, that's, that's me and my baby. That's you my right son. there? Well, he's, okay. He's a teenager. Munchie she tells me stop calling him baby, but yeah. He's okay. He's 13, but yeah, I, I know. Yeah, see, you see, the moms don't play. No Not matter what, the moms mm -hmm. ain't playing. You know, so that's what's up, though. Uh, so um, you know, growing up around Inwood and everything like that. So you went to high. You said high school too, right? You did mm -hmm. high school. Okay, so what was what was high school like? You know, for you and everything. You know. So I, I, I bounced. I bounced around. Went to continuations. I went to uh, uh, Morningside. Went to the continuation in Inglewood. I went to one heart thorn. I graduated from camp. I ended up going to jail. Graduated from camp, but like shit, school in Inglewood, Morningside. That, that that shit was that shit was cold, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was. I don't think it's nothing the same right now. It was like super banged out then. Uh, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, if you would have yeah. went to Morningside then and thought you was a crib, I don't think you would have made it past first period. But it, you could probably slip through the cracks now. And just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was now, rougher then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what 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 year was this? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, shit, I graduated. Oh, 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 seven from camp. So this is like 2004. Oh, you right around okay, you right around me. I'm yeah. about yeah, yeah. I'm about what oh six. Yeah, yeah. So so we was around there, you know, not you know, right around the same, the same time. time, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. So I mean you right. Nothing that you're saying is off. Like I say, it wasn't a, a spot of the crazy thing, it wasn't a spot of blue when I was going to school out there, and it wasn't a spot of red when I was in Watts. So I mean you 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 real about that when you say that, you know what I'm saying, and everything like that. But um but yeah, man, it was it was something serious, you know. Uh, but but everything that you're saying, it's just, it's like I'm thinking, I'm like, dang, yeah, you was definitely around there around the same time. So around this time in high school, I heard eventually you ended up. This is when you um, got shot for the first time, you know, right? Right. And everything. So so you know, if you don't mind, what's the backstory on that? How did that come about? Oh uh, shit, I was uh, I was going to uh, Hillcrest or whatever, and uh, school I let out. I was waiting on this female to come pick me up from school, but you know what I'm saying? She called and said she was coming out of Manchester, so I said I'm a I'm gonna walk down. I'm gonna walk down with the with the crowd. We got to go to what's that, Carl Jr. I'm gonna go to Carl Jr. and okay. meet you there. So we out there in the parking lot hanging out. Those pull up, they out, out of dress code, tats on their face, you know what I'm saying? They 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 hesitate like they didn't want to get out, they get out, they walk past us. And then when they came out, uh, we, we whooped on them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whooped on them or whatever. So one homie did hop in the car and he told us that, you know, walk on the opposite side of the street, walk against traffic, don't walk with the traffic towards your back. Makes we sense. Like, all right, all right. But we didn't do that. So we belly, mm. belly. And, you know, the same car pull up, curve side, start dumping. You know what I mean? They, they grazed me in the head and they shot me in the arm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of blood coming down. So I thought I was like maybe dumb. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then uh, shot out on me one punch. One punch, Uh, he got shot in the foot. I mean, he ended up skipping away. Some hopped in the car. Somebody took him. The paramedics came and got me. But yeah, I got shot coming from school. Uh, man, I mean, hey, people don't know. Like when it come down to it, man, um, it, it ain't no, it ain't no age. 
you know, limit when it come down to situations that happen, you know, in a in the streets that we came up in and everything like that. You know, it don't matter if you 12, 13, 14, 15, mm-hmm. 16. Hey, everybody is out there, you know, doing what they do, you know. So, I mean, at this time, you what, 14, 15 years old, right? Or, or 15, 16? 15. 15 years old. So, so after the situation, did you kind of like, you know, calm down a little bit or did you get more active? Not at all. Uh, uh. That, the day before that, I, the day before that, I went on a high speed. I went on a, on a high speed and then ended up going to jail. But you know, as a juvenile, juvenile, they they let me go for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They let me go. Then I went to school and that happened. Wow. So I'm like, damn, I should have went to jail. Man. You know what I'm saying? But no, nah, that 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 didn't that didn't slow nothing down. You know, some people they gotta bump their head a little harder to learn their lesson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I ain't do nothing but get a red cast, bro. Man. <laughs> Now, when you say go to jail, was you was it more juvie or did you go to YA as well? Nah, juvenile hall camp, okay. county jail, prison. Got you, got you. Okay, okay. Yeah, man, you was you was really uh, up in there, man. You know, uh, I know you say Mariah, you was um, you know, grew up around LA and everything like that. Was it kind of like the? Did you see some of the same things that was going on with maybe some of the the the, the men you was around and everything like that? You know, absolutely. I mean, my dad is an OG, so um, okay. and going to school. Being a regular female, not even a gang member at all, we used to get banged on. Um, and then it was a big race war, too, uh, during that time. So, yeah, I've seen it all. Lost friends. Same same exact thing. Yeah. You know, um, my parents did their best to, like, keep us out of it, you know, out of trouble and stuff like that. I have all sisters, so, you know, none of us gang banged. But still, yeah, we've seen a lot, too. Wow, wow. What are some of the schools uh, you went to? Um, I went to San Pedro High School. Okay, so, okay, San yeah. Pedro. Okay. So, yeah, it's. You know, it's not too many black people out there. And even though I am mixed, I'm Mexican and black, that that doesn't, you don't get a pass. Nah. You no, know, not at all. Nah, so you black, you black. I'm yeah. Sorry. You know what I'm you saying? You know, normally, but, normally yeah. I never say what school, but at this point it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Yeah, I grew up in the um, San Pedro, Wilmington area, so. Got you, got you. And then, you know, at, you know, Mexicans, we grew up around Mexicans as well. So mm-hmm. like you say, black or Mexican, hey, it's the, it's the same thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Watts, you know, uh, you know, at that time when I was growing up out there, 30% of the people around us were Hispanic. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, 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 it, honestly, until my fifth grade teacher, I never even saw it. It sounds crazy, but I didn't even see a, 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 a white individual mm-hmm. until my fifth grade teacher going to um, Ben and Q. You, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? And the Grapeshi area, right? Right over there. Yeah, yep. they blend with the Hispanics real good over there, though. Them and the Wise Body of Grapes, they, they, they like brothers. Yeah, yeah, Hispanics I, and blacks just come yeah, out for real, real, real close. You know, homie yeah. Pablo right across the street. We go over there for dinner, all type of stuff. So yeah, it's the it's a real close knit community. You know, mm-hmm. in Watts when it come down to black and Hispanic. So you right about that. You know, and it's so, it's, it's sad. It's still going on to this day. So you yeah. know, it's, yeah. But some areas different though. Like with yeah. the with the racial thing, and some like you got the black and Hispanic gangs is like getting along. But mm-hmm. but yeah, like Long Beach, it's not like the whole harbor area. Is real toe up with the racial thing, like yeah. whether it's San Pedro, Wilmington, Long Beach, like yeah. it's racial. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right about that, you know. So I mean it was it was a little bit different back then. It seemed like things are, are, are changing. Like you say, it's not you don't see the unity as much, but you also don't see a lot of um the things that we saw coming up, you know, and everything too. So, you know, it look things are a little bit different now, you know, but um I, I always say I wanna see it get even better. You know, I want to see us get to a point to where, you know, this is a beautiful thing that now we sit at tables and have conversations about certain things, right. you know, so people can understand the streets a little bit more and, and, and why we went through some of the things that we went through, you know, because a lot of people don't really understand or know. They just hear about certain things and, you know, they, they, they fear being around you or they think that you're a menace and all this, but don't really know who you are. You know, that's why I did like my show, The City. I got a show called The City that I um, written, produced and directed that really talk about, you know, a lot of the, what's going on in the streets, you know, of LA, you know, in the hoods and all that, and just showing the upbringing of young children, you know, from from um, junior high, high school, on to the adults, you know, it kind of breaks down a lot of that, you know, cause I'm like, we gotta tell our stories. We gotta tell our own stories. We can't let them tell it for us. Mm-hmm. We gotta talk about these things and tell our own stories. Cause if we don't talk, guess what? They gonna tell them mm-hmm. if we don't. So right. sugar coat it and sugar coat it. Yeah, yeah. That's why I got respect for people like, you, Munchie B, you know, Cowboy and others who sit down and have these type of conversations because y'all need to tell y'all stories, man. Mm-hmm. People need to hear y'all stories because people respect y'all. Respect y'all more than what you think. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so real, real talk, you know? Most definitely. Yeah, so so moving along, Munchie, so, um, you know, did you end up uh, graduating high school or? or? Yeah, I, I okay. ended up uh, going to jail. I ended up graduating from camp. 
Okay. Yeah, I graduated from camp in 2007. Okay. Yeah. Dope, dope. So after that, what was like, now you out of school, you know, you 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 18, you, you doing your thing, and you know, you don't got nobody telling you this and telling you that. It's like, hey, do the right thing, or you getting locked up. So wh where did you kind of like go with life after that? I, I was I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do for sure because I, I mean I had a daughter already I had my daughter at 15 mm. and then you know I get out well like 2008 it's just I get out well I get shot at 06 08 2010 2011 2012 like I was just, just like you know what I'm saying playing dodgeball with bullets and hanging out you know what I'm saying mm. like like you know you you you, you came close to being from the city you would have known me and Bosco a long time ago. <laughs> 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 no, you're not lying about that, man. Real talk, you know. So, so you were still at this time. You still in Inglewood, heavy too. You ain't really left out. You still in Inglewood. Yeah, I just had moved from Inglewood. I ain't never yeah. stopped going. Yeah, got you, like, got you. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't really get used to Compton. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you in and out of Compton. Yeah, I was. I'm out of there when the sun rises. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't get used to it. Yeah, no, I feel you on that. So. Eventually, during this time, you know, you're doing your thing, you out ripping and running the streets, you know, like you said, and all of that. Um, you eventually run into a situation to 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 where you get shot again, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this time, it's a little bit more more serious. Um, you know, can you kind of um, you know run through like what 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 happened that led to this situation? First and foremost, how many times did you get shot? I've been shot on six different occasions. But the time that was the worst, like detrimental, was that was that was like the fifth time I got shot after the the, the me most major time too though. Yeah. In the finger, something like small, but but it, it, was, it was basically uh, I was driving, I was in traffic, and I was at the red light. Somebody pulled up to the side as soon as the side of me, as soon as the t car uh, the light turned green, they start start lighting my car up and hit me once mm -hmm. one time in my temple, and then it, it shit knocked my lights out. Then. From there, that, that's that new chapter right there. Man. Hell yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Munchie, this is what, one thing that I always say, you know, um, cause, cause I know when you sit in that hospital bed after getting surgery, that's when you really start to have a lot of realizations and things, you know, start, start going through your head. And I know of this because, you know, I actually faced a situation myself where I got stabbed multiple times in a in a fight. It was me and all my cousins. I got a big family. Like I, my uncles always said, y'all, y'all gang. So, <laughs> you know, so we got into a fight with a gang, you know, um, and I ended up getting stabbed multiple times. So I was in the hospital off of Kaiser in Hollywood. And, you know, after the surgery, I'm just reflecting, you know, thinking, you know, like, you know, I, I, I can't keep, because I was a hothead. I, I can't keep being a hothead like this, you know, and I got to switch it up. At the time when you was, you know, dealing with your situation in the hospital, what were some of the things that was going on through your head? You know, was you kind of having different realizations, or what was what, what was you thinking about at in that time? In the hospital, I was I really wasn't tripping in the hospital because I'm thinking, I I be hearing about these people uh, what in, in the army they get limbs and shit blew off. I'm like, go fix this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking like, laser off. Y'all go fix it. You know what I'm saying? So, but when I get discharged from the hospital, I'm like, okay, they talking some bullshit. So I'm basically like thinking like, how, how I'm gonna move move forward and be as normal as possible and keep the normal program because I ain't done yet. Like I'm I'm still young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Might just sit me down like that. So I had to support my baby mama. You know what I mean? Yeah. My baby mama was there or whatever, whatever, and and uh. I end up, I end up, I end up being cool. I ain't never really went to, I ain't go through no depression or nothing like that. It was just like, a, like a, uh, I was at a cold standstill trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, how, how I'm gonna move, how I'm gonna conduct myself and move forward now though, and still be me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I end up, end up like, you know what I'm saying? I end up doing me the best way I, I, I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I done I done been married since then. I done had another daughter. Man. Shit, Congrats. I do music. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, what I mean, I just keep it normal as possible. Yeah, yeah. And that's nothing but respect, man. I mean, shoot, you 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 here today? I've seen a lot of the things that you've you've done. So you definitely, you know, uh, stood tall and and still out here handling your business. Mm -hmm. You know, moving better than the majority of dudes you see out here moving around. You know, so none but the utmost respect. You know, yeah. you know, I'm I'm a I'm a big faith based you know person. You know, my grandfather was actually a pastor, 
you know, uh, he he part of first, I'm part of third, you know. So you know, I I, I got a lot of that in me, you know. And um, um, I want to ask you, do you feel like things that have happened in your life happen happen for a bigger purpose for yourself? You know, um, you know, God God allowed things for certain reasons, and you know, I always say God don't make no mistakes. Um, what do you feel in regards to that when it comes down to you and your life? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really believe in, in karma. I just think if you uh. If you go in the church and doing the right thing, you'll be blessed. And if you and you play football, you'll get tackled or get injured. Or if if you know what I'm saying, and I wasn't I wasn't doing the things that that lead me to uh, you know be 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 rewarded or anything. So that's this was the conclusion. I got shot, and you know what I'm saying, and it could be worse. So I ain't really I'm tripping off of it. I tripped, but you know what I mean. It could be worse. So that's how I looked at it. And then shit, and I'm still here because I've been shot on six different occasions in fatal spots. So I know it's a purpose for self for self, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But that's why I, I, I tell my story. I, I be going up to the schools, hollering at the kids, you know what I'm saying? Dope. Tell them, tell them about the, you know what I'm saying? Stay away from this shit. This ain't what you think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't hit up to a couple of schools. I ain't been since COVID, but I'm going to get back to it. That's dope. I mean, that's dope, man. Super yeah. dope. I mean, you know, uh, one thing that I would, would would ask is that do you think that you would still be doing those things or would have been doing those things if you didn't go through what, what you went through? Probably so. So Probably you believe so. you still be talking to the kids and everything, change your life the way you've changed your life? If I would have never got shot like the, the way I am? Yeah. Uh, mm, I see, because I got forced into like a, a, a big homie position, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. Like now, I'm just I, I got I take on a different role, so maybe not. I probably would have been on bullshit. I ain't gonna cap. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, I, yeah. And I feel you on that. I say all the time. If if you know that realization happened for me when I was in hospital, you know, after that I fully changed my life. You know what I'm saying? I started getting into understanding business. You know, getting around my uncles who changed their lives and everything like that. Started learning things differently. Wasn't trying to be in the streets ripping and running with you know my cousins and friends trying to do what I want to do whatever. I changed my life, so I understand, like, hey, sometimes it takes going through something to put you in a position where it's like, okay, I got to get on the right path, you know, because right. mm -hmm. the next time may not be another time. The next time may be it for me, mm -hmm. for you real. know, which which I know you've seen that. I've seen that. You didn't, you know, I got family members. They didn't get another chance. Yeah. That was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've you know? many funerals. They're not here, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thank God we here. You here, you know, no yeah, matter I'm what not, not you went best, through. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. You got a good testimony. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Definitely. You know, um, when when you when you hear Munchie's story, Mariah, and everything like that, you know, um, what are what are some of the things you know? Because of course, I don't think that you'll be sitting with someone who you didn't respect, mm -hmm. you know, and everything like that. So, what are some of your thoughts on you know Munchie's past and his story and everything like that? Um, when we, f I mean, I obviously had to like YouTube a little bit. It's like everybody else. And then we met, I was just like, everything that I completely seen was totally different of the man that I met, you mm -hmm. know, like, and the chemistry was amazing. Like he, just his mindset, I, I, I um, how, what am I trying to say? Like his mindset, he's so strong. He always had, finds a positive in everything I'll yeah. say, you know, and I see that he has a big leadership role. So I even come to him for advice all the time. So yeah. being around like somebody like him, it, he plays a big important factor in my life. Like, Honestly, since we've met, you know, yeah, yeah that's he, real dope. He, it's it's very it's and it's very helpful with me even raising my son. You know, yeah. he gives me a lot of great advice. Yeah, that's real dope. You know, and I, and I can see the the connection when it come down, you know, to that as well. You know, just like you know, when you got someone like if my co host co host was sitting next to me, you could just tell how we bounce off of each other. That yeah. okay, there's a connection there. You know, yeah. when it come down to it, I could feel that same energy with y'all. One day y'all gonna have to come uh, come down. We doing one of the shows when she's here, and you know. All jump on the table together yeah, and just chop it up. That that'll be dope. Yeah, that'll be, be real dope. You know. Real. What's her name again? Um, Emirachi. Okay. You Amarachi. know what I'm saying? I was part of her. Queen. Like, what up, Queen? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, okay, okay. yeah, real dope. You know, she 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 probably uh, be be here before I leave because she rolling through. Um, you know, a little later. So hopefully y'all can catch her before. And that segment leave, but, is named what? Uh, we cancel culture. Cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, the one the one with you and Cowboy is called. Oh, talk or take a fade. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. He said that and y'all coined it. Yep. Okay, okay, yep. okay, okay. Coined it. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, so, yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you talked about, um, you know, Bosco earlier, you know, but I heard a story where you, um, you, you know, Bosco, he wanted the bros, you know, and everything like that. I interviewed him many times, you know, and, um, 
and everything. Uh, but I heard that y'all ran into, y'all had a situation at Fox Hills Mall at one point in time and everything um, where y'all had a little encounter. Oh, at that time, uh, my hood, my hood and, and, and his hood, we we wasn't, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't on on good terms. Okay. So we at the Fox Hills Mall, maybe probably like 25 homies. We just we just chilling, just lingering, loitering, all by the uh, <laughs> by the chic 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 entrance. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. At the Fox Hills Mall, right there. Yeah. And then look up, and then uh, you know, Bosco coming through by the by the chic entrance, and he had somebody with him. So uh, I, I mean, I push up to Bosco, speak like Sandy. You know what I'm saying then. Oh boy, he was with he's from West LA Gangsters. He told me like, all right, Eaglewood family, boom. You know, so I'm like, Bosco kept it pushing through the mall, like boom, walked off. The homies talking about that thing. Oh, we should have did this and did that, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't about to switch up because I'm with about twenty some homies or whatever, whatever. Yeah. Me and Bosco, we ain't never had an issue, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And then on top of that, I don't think he know now or even at the time, but uh I was in jail. My my daughter was the the, the flower girl in the same wedding he was in. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, my 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 uh my relative, she married to uh, a friend of his. You know what I mean? So, so he wow. he was in he, he was in the wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm like, nah, me and Bosco ain't never had an issue or nothing like that. So I ain't about to be fake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, even though it's like different different sets or whatever, you know, in- Inglewood is you know every a lot of people most people know each other from. Yeah, you know what I'm city. saying? You know, small city and everything like that. You know, it's all good with our our yeah. sections now though. But even when it wasn't good, I you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna switch up on nobody unless I feel I can't really. I gotta watch you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I ain't really fell out with Bosco. Bosco was straight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a lot of people may not know, you know, when it comes down to Bosco, is actually a super cool, one of the coolest dudes I ever met. Funny, you know, um, down to earth and everything like that. I could tell it's the same energy with you, but, you know, a lot of people see people on social media and don't really understand that dudes is really good dudes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, like y'all hearing the stories, but. You know that, like you say, you're a product of your environment. That's the environment you have to come up in. Mm-hmm. But that don't mean that that make you a a, a bad person or you got a bad mm-hmm. attitude and everything like that. Look, I've got along with gang members and different individuals who sit at this table better than anybody when it come down to people who are not, you know, in gangs or came up in the suburbs and came up middle class. Now nah, I, I connect more with, you know, probably too because that's the environment I grew up in, right? But I always say, you know, a lot of dudes who come up from the streets are some of the goodest dudes. Mm -hmm. You know, just give people an opportunity to get to know people really are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a reason why people are so infatuated with y'all stories. Let's be real. Yeah. On YouTube, what's popping right now? Yep. When y'all sitting at the table talking about y'all past. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that's that's what's that's what people want to hear, and it's for a reason. You know? So that's all I say, you know, you know, really get to know a person before you judge, you know. But uh, do you also know Donut? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah donut, donut, the homie for real, for real. You know, he the first one to connect me with Bosco. Him and my brother was cool. And then, because my brother from Inglewood too, so they really cool. And um, yeah, he started connecting me with people like Bosco and everything. But yeah, Donut, that's a, that's the a big homie, real cool. Yeah, it ain't too many people. I ain't gonna know from the city, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That thing ain't too big. Everybody know everybody. Yeah, that's what's up, yeah, man. Yeah, I think he's really the mayor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that for sure. You gonna have to run one day, huh? <laughs> for real, for real. You know, that's dope. James Buss gotta get out the way. Yeah, yeah. No, I feel you on that. You know, Munchie, I got a, I got a uh, question. You know, my question, you know, result, from a place of always wanting to see, you know, us black men come together, you know? And um, I, I could be wrong, but it's my path when it comes down to bringing up certain, you know, questions and, and asking certain things and everything like that, you know? Um, and I ask, what I want to ask is I know in the past, you know, um, there are issues with, you know, people, you know, that you have from like the Stink Team, Draco, and, and others, you know? And I just want to ask this, you know, if there was like a place maybe in the future for like forgiveness with everything that you went through, you know, and, and, and changing and talking to the kids, if there was ever a place for forgiveness and healing on both sides, would you like have an issue with making it, you know, right with Rafi and the Stink team and, and others, you know, or is that not like an option for you when it come down to that? Nah, that ain't no option. Okay. No, I, I, I rather, I rather, I rather kick it with some sexies and make it cool with them dudes. Cause they, they, uh, that was that was that, that was real disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? And they really didn't have to be like, you know, for somebody to be all disrespectful about the homie rest in peace and music and you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? So like you just like what you you got, you want the wrong type of attention and look what look look what happened, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then that's what happened. Yes men around do. Nobody told them like, man, shut up, bro, kick back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't want yes men around me. Tell me when I'm when I'm 
know what I'm saying, going a little too far off the deep end, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah so due to the disrespect, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm cool off that shit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah nah, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel, and you know, I, I ask questions like that because, you know, for one, when it come down to it, like, now I'm a fan of you learning more, you know, about you. I'm a fan of Draco, Ralphie, you know, and everything like that, you know, and, and I just love us as black men, you know. I love all of y'all. So um, I would never, ever, you know, no matter sitting at this table or not, I would never, ever get involved. It's not my place. But, hey, I'm, I'll always be the person who asks to see is it possible, you know, because if it's possible, you know, no matter what I have to do, you know, I wouldn't even have a problem with, hey, trying to make it possible. So I'm going to ask stuff like that, but I understand you know, to no, hey, this ain't, that this ain't your situation, but I will, but I will ask it. So I appreciate you at least answering it and, and everything like that. No, yeah. no, no, no. I, I, I respect, I respect you asking it. Like I be, I be, I be uh, mending relationships with, with with hoods that we wasn't cool with at one point and putting it together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but but with, with them dudes, like that, it ain't no respect there to begin with. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I don't, I don't respect them dudes, so I ain't no, you ain't no use. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got you, got no, your approach, the way you asked was very, uh, I like the way you asked that question. Because, you know, it. a lot of people like to tiptoe around certain things, but you got to the point and very respectful. Appreciate it. You know, uh, you know, at the things like that is some of the things that I see. My, my, my grandfather started preaching in a, in a, you know, and I saw my grandfather be the mediator of so many situations because he had respect. You know, and, and everything like that. So, um, you know, I, I always say no matter what, because as black men, I love us. Like, I really, really love black people, you know. Right. You know, uh, 100%. People already know how I feel about black women. Mm -hmm. But as black men, too, you know, I respect and love us. So, you know, I, I'm always going to ask things like that. But at the end of the day, because of where I come from, I get it. I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you got to let God get involved. Who knows what will happen in the future let let things continue to move on. Maybe they will end up mending. Maybe they won't. But certain things you can't get involved with. But it's nothing wrong with asking a you know question. Yeah, you know, you respect both sides. Cause I respect both sides. It's the best people you know? stay in their lane sometimes. Yeah. You stay over there. You stay over there. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. It's like right, just one of them agree to disagree things. You just go over there. Go over there. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah enough said. Enough said. You know uh, I want what I want to get into a little bit. You know right before we um ask a couple of questions about the podcast is your music. I know you you doing your music thing and everything like that. Um, in fact, you um, you you started really putting out music in the last couple of years, right? You stepped mm -hmm. it up even more. You know, talk a little bit about your music and what's what's going on with it. Uh, I've been focused on a podcast right now, but I got a hard drive full of music, and I'm about to start letting it rip like top of the year. Okay, I got I got songs with uh, D three, you know, D three signed to Four Honey. Uh, I got shit with the, uh, my boy Skeen, my nigga White John. I got I got uh. Cam in China, you know what I mean? I got, uh, as you psych, I got a gang of shit on my hard drive, like this, you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting this shit uh, settled in and comfortable because I'm still fairly new to the podcasting thing, you know what I'm saying? And then, top of the year, I'm going to do both of them and get to, get to pushing with it. But, nah, I still be, I still be, I be still be in the studio and all the shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's what's mm -hmm. up. That's what's up. You know, and I noticed you mentioned. You know, um, rest in peace, slow 400, you know, a lot too. I remember when in that situation it first happened, my brother from Inglewood and he hit me up. He was he was on one, you know what I'm saying? Cause he was really a, he was, a, he was, he, he from around those parts, you know, met him a couple of times, but was a fan of the music and everything like that as well. You know, so um, I just want to ask, um, you know, did that kind of like change music for you when, when, when that happened to Slim, you know, uh, and everything like that? Or, or did that push you to wanna, I know you ain't really, like you say, you focus on a podcast. But did that affect you in in a way that deterred you away from music a little bit after yeah, that situation? Because that, I know y'all was so tight with it. Yeah, I, it, it did. I was just like kind of like uh, I wasn't, I wasn't. Uh, what's the word? Like a thug or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like my bro, and he was taking me everywhere with him. He was going to Atlanta and all these different states. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And getting it in. So it was like this shit ain't ain't fun no more. You know what I mean? So yeah. but I just started recording, probably like. In the last in the last year and shit, yeah. what he been gone for like two, yeah, yeah. so like yeah, that shit fucked me up. But uh, his his uh, the dude he started Ice Water with his manager and dude he started with Mud Dollars. He had hit me said that next month they they putting together a, a documentary P P Frank Williams mm. for for Slim. You know what I'm saying? He want me to play a part and shit, be a part of it. So wow. that shit should be coming soon. Wow, 
that's that's I the, wanted that's to throw this in here. Our intro song to our podcast is uh Munchie. Okay. And it's uh with Ruchi and Dizzy and the supporters love it. So yeah. I'm excited. Oh uh, yeah, that's the intro and the outro to yeah. the to the podcast. That shit not. Wow. Yeah. It's called it's called Make It Out. And okay. This, this is super dope. Wow, and and it, you have you have the whole song of it and everything like that as well. Mm -hmm. What's oh, the yeah, name that, again? Because people may want to check it out. It's called Make It Out. It's on all the platforms and shit. But you know, okay. it's on the uh, intro and the outro of the uh, of the pod. You know what I'm saying? But nice. y'all can y'all can find it anywhere on the internet, anywhere you can click though. Dope, dope, man. That's what's up, man. Uh, you know, talking about the podcast and everything like that. Let's get a little bit, you know, more into that as well and and everything too. So, um, you said so. How long y'all been doing it again? The podcast thing. Uh, yeah. Somewhere in this year. What, what month is this? November. Yeah, we're in November now. Yeah, probably so, something like John. So maybe around like six months, something like that. Yeah, that's five, a, six months. We the day we the day we first met was the day we started recording. Like we wow. just got on camera. Day one, mm -hmm. it was on. Mm -hmm. Wow. So so what's been? Did y'all have a goal when y'all first started, or was, was it like like hey, we just gonna get it going? You know, we gonna jump in these mics and let's see where it go. I was I, I I wanted to do this for a minute, and then just my goal is to find somebody to get paired off with. I'm compatible with. But 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 now to go we we gonna run it up on the street TV channel and then we go get our own channels booming you know what I'm saying my 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 personal shit already monetized but then you know what I'm saying we still go stick together as far as me and her might add one more person you know what I'm saying on a different type of uh, podcast slot okay. and keep it pushing you know what I'm saying dope dope and when, how we normally start sometimes we just might just get there and just flow <laughs> and just get to talking and it just. Yeah seems it, nothing's ever really rehearsed like yeah. not not ever rehearsed it's never been rehearsed you know if something's trending we might talk about it but typically we just get there and we just go like and we just bounce off of each other and we wow. try not to go man we try hardest not to go to cloud route you know i need to try yeah, to be sh uh, shock jocks yeah you try yeah i ain't yeah. trying to you know what i'm saying but but sometimes you can't help it when you got like i ain't gonna say his name dude like and, and, and at you you know what i'm saying then you gotta yeah. like read them they rice a little bit but yeah, they're yeah. like they ain't trying to go the cloud route and all the little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. They ain't got to do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm like the little peacemaker. I hate drama okay. and stuff, so I always try to, you know, stay neutral and stuff. But <laughs> That'd be a Mirachi. <laughs> yeah. All I, these niggas again. See, I don't yeah. be getting no credit. They always look at me like the villain, right? But I don't, I don't disrespect the stink team or nothing. I don't even bring them Not dudes up. All. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And, yeah. and, on, and also, like, when there's certain topics, um, you know, that I don't need to like speak on like when it comes to like certain gang politics i'll stay quiet and you mm -hmm. know let him speak and if my opinion is ever needed i speak but for the most part i know my lane and i stay in it yeah yeah you know and i got a lot of respect for that you know i got a i got so much respect for you know individuals like you and emirachi because a lot of times let's, let's be real in the heat of the no jumper you know back and forth situation with us us and them she just sat at this table like, but she have our back, like mm -hmm. she. But you could tell it's like, um, you know, it's like, look, I ain't trying to be all a part of this situation. But I'm gonna have my team. Oh back. yeah, for sure. You know I, what I'm I saying? Got my no matter back, what. For sure. But yes. but it, when it's time for me to step back and let them do they talk and say what they say, hey, you know, I'm gonna let them do and have that too, too as well. So mm -hmm. I got a lot of respect. People think that it's easy to sit in y'all positions, but it's not. You know, with 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 men who have egos and pride and everything. Yeah, like, you, I've always you know, been taught never never engage in men's business. You know, but I got my teams back to the fullest. But certain things I know when I need to be quiet and just play so, my role. So yeah. it'd be it'd be no no jumper straight bullets coming this way because because a cowboy and, and, and the break baby thing or something. Oh no, nah, it was way but it was before that. Adam was oh. still in a lot of our content and stuff and and our, and our ideas. Oh. You know, a lot of the same even people was working with. They was calling the same individuals to uh you know, uh, uh, do stuff with them, you know? Hmm. You know, like, uh, we used to have like a, well, first and foremost, when I first did like that interview with Cowboy and Bosco, um, Adam talked to um, uh, uh, individuals over there about that interview and was basically saying, hey, why don't we do that same thing over here? He said it on his, on his uh, podcast without even shouting out who did it first. Hmm. So he kind of was just, you know, leeching i don't you know trying to trying to take what other people are doing and make it pop up over there because he got the numbers and we did it okay you so, get what i'm saying so that's kind of how i started and i called it out i called him and called it out i think you're about so, to ask the same question i want to ask but you go first let me see so it, it went kind of up after that then you know we also have a segment to where we bring a, a lot of you know it'd be some of us guys and women you know sitting at the table and we just talk about different topics adam called up the same people we work with that help us set that up to get the same people over there you know, hmm. and of course, money talk, you know, and everything. And she would call. She's like, look, hey, he giving me a big bag. So hmm. I'm going to do it. 
but you know, you Ashley know, he, should, he, 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 yeah, he, he, own, he, you know what's going on though. But he, I'm like, nah, get your bread. I'm laughing about it. get your bread, you know. But you know, he, he trying to, you know, do the same shit we doing. You know, he doing it on purpose, but it's all good. So it's a lot of that going on over there, and I'm not gonna let it pass. Other people may just let Adam do what he's doing. I say shit. I, I, that ain't me. You know, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna say what's up. So, no, for real. yeah, that's why to this day he always throw his little, you know, little comments up into you know when, when he doing interviews with certain people, people who's been over here like Bosco and and um you know rest in peace uh um S Bone. You know when they go when they went up over there try to ask little things about this podcast, but they don't bite. So I got respect for them straight up for going over there and not really biting off of Adam bullshit. But he always trying to throw little 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 darts. But you what know, you're doing is rocks. authentic, you know, no matter what, your conversation is authentic, so it's always going to be respected by the real ones. Appreciate it, man. That's that's all love right there. See, you know? spotted love Definitely. He, on his, he had, he used to be like, the order of the day, he said, order of the day. And I told her I was going to implement that, like, in the beginning of the podcast, say, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a word somebody could use, you know what I'm saying, yeah. or, or a powerful word, period, shit like that. I was going to implement that, though, but I, I'll give him his just do and let him know where it came from. Yeah, niggas yeah. ain't plagiarizing niggas shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's all for respect, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm always going to shout out other platforms because you got to give them respect. Just right. like like uh, Cinemills TV. You know, I saw your interview over there. I saw other stuff, but when I saw that, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm cool with them. Let me see if we can get Munchie up over here. So, shout out to Cinemills TV. Yeah, you know, and Maisha in the back, you know, for, for helping put you know, this together today. I'm always gonna show love and shout out individuals. I just didn't like Adam wasn't showing us love. He'll show Cam Capone or Vlad, you know, it's his little people, he'll show them love. Hmm. But he ain't gonna shout out us thinking that, oh, they ain't they some little podcast, they ain't gonna say shit. Hell no. Nah. I'm gonna say something and we're gonna be loud with it. You okay, know, I have a up. question, because yeah, you know you had asked him a question about, you know, could you squash certain or be at peace with certain people. Would yeah. you ever sit at the table with him, whether it's here or there, and you know discuss this conversation on camera with Adam? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, is that the answer? Um, I, I I could I could do it, but um, we got to be in a position where anything, it, it, whatever you got to say, get it off your chest. It ain't right. gonna be no like, hey, hey, you can't say this or talk about this, nah. If we gonna go on camera, hey, whatever gets said, gets said, period. Mm -hmm. But if you disrespect me, I'm also gonna slap you in the face. Hmm. I'm gonna slap your ass on camera as well. Oh, so understand playing. that, you know what I'm saying? Like we ain't finna disrespect each other. I'm gonna say my piece, I'm gonna bring up certain situations, and I wanna see if you got a response from that because you ain't answered none of the things that I brought up here on what made you do this and that. You mm -hmm. just try to talk shit. Mm -hmm. So we gonna have those type of conversations to where we talk about it, so I can see what's going on in that mental state of yours. Mm -hmm. But if you disrespect me, it's gonna be some shit on camera as well. Period. You that know, because I'm not gonna disrespect you on on, on camera. So as long okay. as there there's respect there, then I, I could do it. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna back I think away from be, it. That'd be cool. Like two men being accountable. Hopefully, yeah. it doesn't have to get the slaps and blah, 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 yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. But I'm like, just don't disrespect. Yeah, me. yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Eventually, in due time, not you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. In due time. You yeah, know, you don't never know. force that. You really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely not forcing it. Hell no. Mm -hmm. Not forcing it. You know, but if the opportunity came about, you know, and, and, and people got involved and wanted to see it happen and we set it up and made it happen, you know, um, we'll have to set it up the right way. Right. But I'll be open to it. Definitely. Yeah. You know, why not? You know, because how am I, I? I always say for one, I'm not ever beefing with another black man. I put that on. I put that on tape, camera, period. I can't do that. That's why I didn't get into the brick baby stuff and everything like that. I'm not, or even Crip Mac. I'm not beefing with no other black man. I can't do it. I let that shit go on the back end. If somebody wants us to talk or whatever, let's do it. But I'm not doing that on camera. Right, respect. To me, Adam is a different story. But I still look at it like, if I'm going to talk about peace, I got to be open to make peace with an individual who I may have an issue with. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Otherwise, hey, why are you talking about all this peace but you... You can't sit down with dude over there. I mm -hmm. can sit down with dude, you know, in the right situation. Maybe not right now, mm -hmm. but eventually I can sit down and have a conversation with dude, you know, mm -hmm. and, and go from there with it, you know. So, so yeah, yeah. I but that don't mean I don't understand situations like 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 yours or others when hey, there's issues that we cannot resolve. Yeah, that's you know? deeper. I just say on camera. I did not build this to now be on camera going back and forth with other black men. I didn't, I'm not doing that. It's not happening. I built this for us. Mm -hmm. Not for us to go against each other, you know Amen. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Facts. yeah. I, I I prefer not to go back and forth for uh, you know, nobody, but 
I am good at it. My tongue is my gun. I swear to God, I verbally disrespect somebody bad and have them re- reevaluating shit. But I don't want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't have to like do it with Snoopy Badass a few times, but no. And I'm done doing that shit. That shit over now. I don't want to do that shit again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That shit a waste of time. But that's growth. Like I say, that's growth when it come down to you. You know what I'm saying? So that's much respect when it come down to that. You know, at the end of the day, I just want all y'all to all y'all to know when it come down to it, I love all y'all. You know what I'm saying? That's what I always, I'm like. I want to put out that energy, no matter what's going on between individuals. You know, because sometimes you never know how individuals feel if they see that person sitting with you. And I'm like, look, I love all y'all, man. Like, you know, yeah, I may have a closer relationship with this person or that person because I don't know the other person. But I'm open to sit down with everybody because I got nothing but love for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So I want us to at least get to a place to where, you know, we could be cordial. And don't look at it like, okay, if that person does business with that person or sit with that person, you now feel something about that person. Nah, man. Yeah, that's what happened with Esbon and, uh, let's cut it over here, huh? Well, Cowboy and Esbon. I, I really, he was, really. He was upset. He came over here and sat down with Cowboy, right? Really? I, who, basically? You talking about over there at No uh, Jumper? Uh, 600 was upset that, you know what I'm saying, he came over here and, and had a conversation with Cowboy then. Yeah, that's what, that's what I kind of, you know, everything happened so fast with S-Bone. That's what I kind of heard was what was going on out there with that situation. I mean, to be honest, like I said, I'll be staying out of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. When it come down to that situation, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, that, that ain't, that ain't, I can't get into... A, a, a world that I haven't been a part of my whole life So that's why I try to stay out of that As much as possible No matter who sit with me I say look I, That ain't my business mm-hmm. You know and everything like that But when it come down to it I, I This is what I will say about the, that interview To me that was One of the most powerful interviews I have ever seen on YouTube Because it was something that no one ever expected to see You know what I'm saying And they had so much respect for each other from the time that they both walked in here to the time they both left. Just as men, no matter what they passed were, as men, you know what I'm saying? And they both stood there and told their stories, you know? And, and you could tell that when we sit down, no matter where we come from, we share so many similarities, so it's so easy to talk to each other. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you could feel that when you watch it. And I'm like, man, see what we do when we come together? See what we do? When we stand tall as one, like, they can't fuck with that. I'm like, if more of us realize that, who will be able to stop us as black people, as black individuals? I just think that we need to realize it more. See, these other cultures who not, I'm going to be real, ain't as strong as us. One thing that they do got over us, us, though, they know how to stand together. And that's why you see a lot of these other cultures winning. But when it comes down to our strength and who we are, if we learn how to stand together, Nobody would be able to fuck with us mm-hmm. at all. But right. that's the part that we just can't figure out. And I, I still got hope that one day we will. And I want to be one of them that's trying to bridge those gaps, you know, and everything like that. That's why I'm big on sitting down with different individuals who come from different places and having those conversations. Because yeah. if more people that's coming up see that, maybe they'll be like, oh, okay, oh, it's cool. That's cool. You know, why not? All right, you see how you said, like, when it comes down, mind my business? Yes, sir. Last night we interview uh Flacco. Okay. We flick it up. Mariah posts a picture of me, her, and Flacco on her Instagram. Yeah. Somebody get in the comment and say comments and say, Oh, you opt up. Talking about her being in the picture with Fl- Flacco and blocks her. Oh wow. Like so she just the interviewer. Have nothing to do with what y'all got going on whatsoever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't care about it. And you just you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, nah, it's shit crazy. But you, but you know when it comes down to the comments, man, people are gonna say all type of bullshit. And this was another podcaster, you know that. and it was the 16, oh, it was another it was podcast. Yeah, it, it 16. was sixteen shot him, and I was like, right. dang, I, I even made oh, it clear on okay. camera that that's my friend before you know the question was even when Munchie had asked him the question. Flacco never disrespected him, and I was just, uh, I was like, wow, that has nothing to do with me. I don't get in men's business for mm-hmm. one. Number two, this is business, you know, like. I, I stay completely out of it and I'm like yeah. how am I I'm an op I've never been called that before I'm a woman I I don't conduct myself in any other hey, kind man, of way hey man look bro to the world wow. Maya ha- Ma- Mariah Hayes come from an unbiased place yeah she ain't with all the little BS and you niggas get to tripping on her niggas are tripping, tripping back not her but nigga niggas tripping back 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I was surprised. I'm like, wow. And Some we, weirdo shit. And we were I left with such great energy because I was so happy. Our interview with Flocka was so good. Like, cause you know he has a, he can talk about anything. You know. Yeah. So I was like, wow, that's pretty messed up. <laughs> you, <laughs> but you know, you that's know part what, of the game, I guess. Yeah, you know what I say when people start start to say something that mean that you're growing. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget what my pastor said. If you ain't got no haters, you better get you some. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what my pastor said. Hmm. You better get you some because that means you're doing something right. So at the end of the day, that's all just 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 love, really, at the end of the day. People that's just checking you out and got respect for you that have to say a little something because, you know, it's a little bit of, hey, they see you out there winning, you doing something, you sitting at a table with respected individuals, and they don't like it. Who knows what they really feel inside? But at the end of the day, you rather have people talking about you than not. Yeah, you know, true. and you know the comments gonna go off regardless. Yeah. Comments say all kind of shit, but guess what? When they see me out there in the streets, the mall, you know, like I was talking about the situation, I was doing uh, helping my cousin in Compton with a yard sale. I didn't know what dudes was on, but the Altima pulled up. It was about nine of them up in the Altima. <laughs> dudes just jumped out the car out of nowhere. My cousin looking at me like, you know them? I'm like, hell no. I'm like, dang, I don't got nobody with me, nothing. No. But they coming up, it's like, hey, what up? Nothing to some podcast. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. shit. That's dope. Okay, that's you know what I'm dope. saying? And they that come part. up talking about the shows and the episodes and everything like that. Like, they like, we watch it every day. You know, pulling it up on their phone and everything. So at the end of the day, people say stuff in the comments, but people really low key, they got nothing but love for you. You know what I'm saying? And when you see them, people ain't going to show that energy Hell that no. you hear in the comments. You ain't never going to see that type of energy. I'm not saying that it ain't no idiots out there that may have that or may be about that negative shit. But I'm saying for the most part, people really is going to show nothing but love. No, you I know, unless unless you put a negative energy out there. Yeah, and I don't put any type of negative energy for him to be a podcast. I would assume he would understand, you know, it's business and stuff like that. But I mean, hey, if that's how you feel, I still <laughs> I, I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I'm I'm working. You yeah, know? yeah, I'm just trying to feed my kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. and build a brand and help my family out. Like, and yeah, I, she, he had to explain it to me, break it down to me, because I I'm a little more softer, I'm a little more sensitive. So I was like, dang, that's messed up. Why we say that? I thought we was cool, but you know, yeah. it is what it is. Sixteen shot him. Probably wanted to be at that table with y'all. That's it. Oh shit. He I probably wanted to be sitting down with y'all. That's all. You know, if you were, hey, come over with, he would have been right here. You know what I'm saying? We, but, we but, but, but you know what? I do know it was a, you know what? I, I There was a situation with him and yeah, Flacco. Yeah, they did have right. a, situ a really deep situation, but that yeah, wasn't yeah. even our even It wasn't topic. about you. You wasn't. Yeah, yeah and that wasn't involved, even what our yeah. topic was. I believe we talked about so many other things. It, that wasn't even, you know? So yeah, it was yeah. just like, that's crazy to say yeah. something like that, you know? But it's still <laughs> still love on my end. I, I don't dislike them. It's, I, I, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we got to always, you know, put out love energy when it come down to it and let people know when it come down to what we doing we trying to we trying to make sure that we bridging that gap when it come right. down to our community you know what i'm saying because who knows just to be real and i'm gonna say it right here who knows what people could say even with somebody like you sitting here uh, munchy because you know people know i'm you know i rock with rafi now you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. I, I i rock with people on that side that side whatever right so, but but at the end of the day, people also know at the point when it, now when it come to me, I don't give a shit because at the end of the day, I care about us and love us as black men mm -hmm. and black women more than all of that other stuff. So people already know well that's 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 it's Paul being Paul, and not just that, they don't say nothing when when they do it. Anybody yes. can sit with Vlad, right? Hmm. Yes. Anybody can sit with Adam, right? Yes. Cam Capone, nobody say shit yes. about none of these individuals mm -hmm. when they sitting at certain tables, and and nothing against. You know, them, Vlad, Cam Capone, even where you was just at Cinnamon Mills, nothing against none of them. It's all love. You know what I'm saying? But nobody say nothing when different individuals from different places and backgrounds sit at that table. Mm -hmm. So why say anything when we doing the same thing? Shouldn't we be able to do it when it come down to us? We are part of the same place that you this, come this, from. Yes. Why you getting on nothing and not saying culture. nothing to them? This is our culture, yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just got to keep on, we got to keep standing on that. You know, don't don't stop doing what you're doing, all right? Absolutely. In fact, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to always push out love because I ain't got time to be negative. Facts. That ain't, ain't going to get me nowhere. It's Facts. Cool. Exactly, exactly. So, so nah, you, you know, you handled it right. And like I said, you got a strong team. I know y'all going in the right direction. So, yeah, just just keep on grinding. You know, I already see where y'all going with it. And oh, other yeah. people see it as well. Yeah. 
So yeah. you know, hey, sixteen, man, over. you can pull up, bro. Or That's you know, it. Come, come, you know come we, talk. He was invited yeah, yeah. a couple months ago. I don't understand. Well, you invited again. Yeah. <laughs> pull up like huggies. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> That's what's it's, up. It's all love. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kicked up that male y'all. ego is something different. <laughs> it's something different, right? But I'm thankful you know? for Munchie because yeah. if it wasn't for him, I probably would have been in my feelings like, dang, that's me. Why are they coming for me? Yeah, I had to tell yeah. her early on about them comments, yeah. bro. You gotta stop paying attention to them comments. You know what I'm saying? Oh, them comments. That's why I say it's, it's, it's vicious. Yeah, it's vicious. I had to cut yeah. that off of my phone. Like I ain't finna watch all those. Yeah, I'm I, I turned them off too. I'm yeah, done. yeah. Don't even don't trip about those comments. They doing what they do. Mm-hmm. But like I said, at the end of the day, that's what you want. Those are really fans. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah, they bringing traffic. You, you know, you what so you much ride, traction. Yeah, yeah. It's either that or nothing going yeah. on. That mean, you know, your 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 stuff ain't popping. Yeah. But you see them because you popping. I remember one time I finally responded to a comment and it was like, oh, I'm just playing girl trying to get your attention. I'm like, okay, there I'm never go. responding again. <laughs> there you go. It's almost like they surprised. Yeah. A couple of times when I respond, they surprised like, yeah. huh? You know, they wasn't expecting that, you yeah. know, but it she, always says love taps. That's she it. say her Instagram on every episode of the podcast, but they, <laughs> I guess they ain't got the confidence to hop in the DM. They gonna, oh, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, they, they stay in the comments on you. They, nah, mm-hmm. they, they spaces the comments on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They're not leaving about it that. They're not going to the DM. That's more personal. Know. It's, more personal, especially you know? if they say something about him. I saw. I used to be going, cra- going in. Nothing oh, yeah, disrespectful. He's like, just stop. Don't you be doing this all night? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> right. As a fact, you know. Right. But that's dope that you know you hold her down like that and let her know, nah, we good. This is just what people do. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not even personal. They ain't doing that in real life. It's so just part what they of this shit is gonna come with it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So they don't take too much. You know, what I'm saying personal if it ain't in three D. Man, yeah. facts, facts. You I've, know? I've gotten better though. Yesterday I had my little three seconds of uh, and now I'm just like, whatever, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> you know, let it out. Yeah. you know what I'm saying. Let it out. You know, some hey, sometimes you may even gotta let it out with the mic in your in your, in your face. Yeah, couple <laughs> times I do. I had to get back the next day. You know what? Hey, I didn't, I wasn't even trying to put it out there like that. But <laughs> when we on the mic all the time, it happens. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It happens. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I mean, what what's the plans going forward? You know, uh, uh, let the people know. What y'all got coming, you know, coming when it comes down to the podcast or or, or what, what's what's the plan going forward with the podcast? We definitely want to kick off some merch. That's number one. Okay. Uh, shoot, oh, man. yeah, the Richard Hart uh, merch, man. We had a, a lot of good guests. We still ain't dropped our, a lot of interviews. Mm-hmm. We had, a, had, a, had some high-level guests still coming mm-hmm. and uh, get these sponsorships uh, rolling in, you know what I'm saying, just building off that, you know what I'm nice. saying, then splinter her off, like I said earlier, and then, you know what I'm saying, we go – Keep it going. Nice, nice. That's yeah. dope. That's what's up. And and, and, I, and I, like I said, I, I love seeing collaborations like this. You know, uh, I, I always say, you know, the best shows are the ones where you got a man and a and a woman. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know, giving different perspectives. Like a lot of times, we try to like, you know, be more on like even sometimes they what's going on in the streets or the community. But a lot of times we go off into those conversations that people want to hear. Hey, what are your thoughts when it comes down to a woman dealing with relationships? What are your thoughts when it comes down to a man dealing with? It seemed like in our community, people love those type of topics. Oh yeah, we so go we there go, too. We be going <laughs> off into those directions, not even always trying. It just yeah, happens. It does. You know, no, I love those type of conversations. That's yeah. why we got to double back when uh. When your girl get back, we got, girl, we yeah, got to, we got to, we gonna do that, we gonna do that, one hundred percent. You know, in fact, yeah, I'm saying the next couple of weeks, let's set it up, let's oh, yeah. do let's it, let's make it happen. And you one know? thing about Munchie and me, I know people think he, from the outside, whether you think he's oh he's super tough, he he, we talk about everything, yeah, we yeah. talk about everything, and it, and we're both very funny, like yeah. very silly. So yeah. our conversations are. And now, I'm R and B thug, not the game, and we both love R and B. So what? Yeah, we are. We R and B, you know, oh, we yeah. R and B out gotta, too. We, gotta, we, we, gotta, we we had like the shows where the top um twenty R and B artists, top twenty R and B album. We be doing shows like that all the time. Oh yeah, we got. You know do what that. I'm saying? Gotta, so bring a song. We yeah, love, yeah. We love us some R and B. Hey, that's dope. We definitely this is gonna happen. So yes. be be expecting that that call. We yes. gonna we gonna set this up in the next couple of weeks. You know, yes. and everything. So yeah, yeah. Mandatory. Man, any shout outs though? Oh man, shout out Alex Alonzo. Uh, uh, Street TV, yes. my boy Marcos, I sent him for uh, giving us the alley oop coming over here. Shit, yes, you know yes, Inglewood, period. You know what I'm saying? My, yeah. my, my girly faces, my daughters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, dope, dope. That's what's up. Yeah, That's Instagram. what's up. Yeah, let people oh, know yeah. where to find you. Follow my Instagram, uh, Twitter, and thread is MB underscore THA Mayor. That's MB underscore the mayor. 
all three of those. Yeah, you are the mayor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he got, that. <laughs> yeah, he got people calling okay. me the councilwoman now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And then a uh, shout out to you for, you know, having us. Yeah, um, appreciate and, it. You know, shout out to Munchie for bringing me along as his co-host. I appreciate him for all the opportunities. Shout out to Alex Alonzo. Um, shout out to my my babies, my son and my daughter. And mm-hmm. um, you can follow me on Instagram at underscore Mariah with four H's. You can also click the, click the link in my bio and purchase my poetry book. And my YouTube is Mariah Sharice. I have almost 600 subscribers and no nice. videos, but I'm going to work on it. I, hey, need, help. I, need, I need some help with that. But, yeah, I need to start using that. And, um, yeah, shout out to God for, you know, all these blessings. Amen. Amen. Hey, God, it's the one. Also, too, I want to real quick before we get out of here, shout out to Maisha, too, because when, when I saw your interview and everything like that, you know, I, I it was just one day I said, hey, I want to get Munchie on here, you know, and everything like that. There's people on here. The next day she had it set up. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, my Maisha the one. She Maisha the one. Yes, you know what I'm Maisha. saying? She the one. So, you know, shout out to Maisha as well. You know what I'm saying? But, um, hey, man, this is great. Like I said, we definitely going to have y'all back. We yes. got to, you know, yes. for an episode of Cancel Culture. We're going to turn it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But, uh, but man, like shout out. Boy. You know, Mariah. You know what I'm saying? Munchie B. Paul P. Hey, Francis in the back doing his thing. Maisha was here too. You know, we got John. Everybody in the building. All right. Yeah. Th- shout hey. out to your staff. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. I oh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hey, we out of here. Love you all. Doses. Peace, <laughs> I gave up and stopped believing.